All right, welcome back. So today we are doing a question and answer video covering lots of stuff that you guys have been asking lately on the channel. So thanks so much for joining. Now let's get into it. All right, we're keeping this real simple. We're just chilling in my room on a rainy day with some coffee and pulling up the comments. So Brandon Byram, so he says, I'm a realtor in Dallas and I've only just started following you, but you're already giving me good ideas. It never crossed my mind to do time-lapse shots. So awesome. Uh, welcome to the channel. Hope you like the rest of the videos. Um, I am just getting more and more into time lapses personally. Uh, they're super cool and I've not utilized them enough in the past, but since I tested the R7, and it had some new, better time-lapse features. I've been super intrigued by them, and I think that they are a really, really cool tool. So be looking forward to more stuff on time-lapses in the future. So we got Tori Wood, and we've got, I, I'm not gonna try to pronounce this, but they're asking about making vertical real estate videos, and uh, I do have a video on that already, which I'll link down below this video, but also I have a course coming up on that too. So basically they're wanting to do real estate videos vertically on a phone like this. And the only difference is you need to scoot back further to get your compositions. You need to still shoot super wide angle shots. And um, I think if you're planning on posting them on vertical, platforms like short form content like TikTok or YouTube shorts or reels on Facebook and Instagram. Um, you just have to compose things a little bit differently, but I think shooting vertical native for that output is a lot better and you're gonna get a lot better compositions. You're gonna get a lot more stuff in your shots and they're gonna look better. The only big thing that you might have to do is shoot a little bit lower so that you can keep it pretty level one big thing that doesn't look super great uh, that's really easy to do is walk around at your normal kind of eye level with your phone pointing down and then you're going to have all sorts of distorted vertical stuff and it doesn't look quite as polished but I mean it can still work though so for short form content uh, as long as you're showing stuff in a nice way and you're showing yourself if it's your own channel think it's probably going to do pretty good. The biggest tip I have for short form content is to not waste anybody's time. So keep it very, very concise, very simple and straightforward. It's good. So one day ago, not sure if this is a question or just a comment. Uh, so postman9699 says the whole point of me using HDR is to create surreal looks. Cool. If I want them to look natural, I won't use HDR. Okay. <laughs> Some of this is kind of negative, I think, but basically people don't know what they're doing and use the wrong techniques for the wrong stuff, I think is what they're getting at. People learning too quick from YouTube shortcuts and presets and from YouTube videos that don't teach them much. So yeah, it's really good to learn the fundamentals as opposed to learning shortcuts and the quick way to get the results. As I always say on the channel, the more tools you know to be ready to deploy on any type of shoot, the more consistent results you're gonna get and the better, uh, more professional you're gonna be at the craft. So shameless plug here, um, if you are interested in learning all of the fundamentals about photography and HDR and flash, um, check out my courses because I do have one that is foundations based and that teaches all the basic stuff like what is aperture, what's ISO, what shutter speed do, um, all your manual settings stuff, white balance, etc. for shooting and editing. And then I've also got one on shooting with flash and that covers how to add flash and make it look natural and nice in your interior real estate stuff. So yes, learning quick shortcuts is not a great way to get started in the industry. It's a lot better to start with the basics, the boring stuff, and know what you're doing. So I think that covers that hopefully. <laughs>
Cheers. <sighs> All right, next question, which is off of my last video. I get this question a lot too, which is interesting. So I guess all of y'all are wanting to know what to tell clients on how long to estimate for a shoot. So they said, how long does it take you to do a real estate video? Do you do both photo and video at the same time? I've gotten my foot in the door because I do video and surprisingly, not a lot of photographers do good real estate videos out there. They're usually exhausted and sweating by the end. Do you feel pressure to do all your work within a certain time frame, especially if the homeowners live there? Just curious because you seem relaxed and have time to shoot YouTube videos, etc. Uh, so, so it's a it's a good question. Uh, basically, for a normal, super fast typical real estate shoot where there's homeowners there, I'll schedule it to be like two or three hours, depending on what can work. So a couple tips for endurance during shoots, um, having some food that has lots of protein and stuff in it and slow digesting carbs before you do a shoot. It really, really helps me be less shaky doing shoots and also having caffeine, even if you want to get into like having a pre-workout before doing a shoot. That is really, really helpful to keep you going. Obviously, be careful. Don't have way too much caffeine. Don't have caffeine before every single shoot if you're doing a lot per day. I'm not giving medical or nutritional advice, but that's just what I do. I also keep like protein bars and stuff in my camera bag to keep me going. <laughs> also, I don't know if you guys know this, but um, my behind the scenes series, it's not actual client shoots. So I find like an Airbnb or a vacation rental that looks cool, that looks like it'd be an interesting place to teach some stuff at and like it'll work for certain ideas that I have. So for those, I'm actually booking an Airbnb or vacation rental place and going and staying there and producing the videos pretty much working the whole time, usually for like two days. So that definitely helps because I have tried doing real client shoots in the past behind the scenes videos, but it's just like too weird and too many things going on. Basically Airbnbs are the best case scenario because they're already staged, they're already clean, there's nobody there. Um, you have total access to everything and all that stuff. So basically just like any type of production, um, it just takes out a lot of the variables that will mess up a shoot. So like not dealing with homeowners, not dealing with clients being late, not dealing with people being unprepared and all that stuff. So that helps ensure that I am relaxed, focused on making good videos and just chilling with you guys. So another reason to thank Epidemic Sound for uh, providing the budget to rent those places and use them to make YouTube videos at. But for doing the YouTube videos and doing the shoots, it usually just takes about like twice as long because I'm like talking to the camera, setting things up and all that while I'm doing it all. User KNP2PR2ZF8. I don't have my glasses on so I keep reading things weird. Uh, they said, hello Taylor, would it be okay if I had one flash and took several shots with one flash and merge it all? Would there be downsides to this? So I actually did that in a video a long time ago, which I'll link down below. Uh, it was me in a hotel room doing way too many flashes and merging them all in Photoshop. It took a long time to edit, but you can do some really cool effects. Um, and actually, yeah, I think you can do most stuff with just one flash. It just takes a little bit longer in the editing. So that's why I don't do it. I like using multiple flashes for interiors just because it speeds up my workflow. And over the long term, the time that it saves is worth the cost of an extra flash for sure. So yes, no downsides to it as long as you know how to do editing. All right, next comment. So. This is from the shy photographer two days ago. So they said, I've learned so much in this video and it's about the behind the scenes smartphone video at the 
black house. I don't know what to call it, but uh, that's all. Not a question, but it's always nice to hear from you guys on if this stuff's helping you, if it's not helping you, just let me know and I can kind of revise the content to make it more helpful and feature some more tips and tricks better next time. All right, so next is Taylor A Media. Interesting, not a lot of guy tailors. So they said, awesome content. I see you're tagged Charlottesville. Are you in Virginia or Texas? I'm local to Virginia. A lot of people seem confused about this. So I actually moved to Virginia a few years ago. So I'm in Charlottesville, Virginia right now. That's it. So if you're local, feel free to hit me up on Instagram. It's always nice to meet people and collaborate with people, work with people, all that stuff. I don't know that many people out here. All right, we got another positive feedback one. So Aaron Kinberg says, hey, just wanted to let you know how invaluable your content is for me just getting started in real estate videography journey in the most sincere way possible. Thank you. So thanks. It's awesome. <laughs> It's always really cool to hear how this stuff helps you guys and that is definitely what inspires me to keep making stuff <laughs> so it's awesome on that note about videography um, I'm kind of shifting the channel I don't know if you noticed this but more towards videography focused stuff because I think that's more of my kind of specialty like I've Obviously I've done tons and tons of photography and real estate photography and all sorts of other industries of photography. But um, since videography combines everything in my past into one niche, I think that's kind of the direction I'm going with this channel and the, making content about that, pushing my own personal limits and expanding as much as I possibly can uh, into better and better and better videography stuff. So I think it's time to keep moving on and pushing forward. Last question. So this person's screen name cracks me up so much. It's called Troggy Woggy. <laughs> I don't know what, does that, that mean something or is it just for fun? Uh, so they say about the last video with the cinematic slider shots and tripod shots and all that. So they said, I always like slider shots. Thanks for, think your, I think your methodology on this video one was more artistic. Now I want to, now I want you to handhold a drone inside and try some cool shots utilizing the gimbal in the drone. <laughs> chop, chop. They've been thinking about doing that and want my take on it. <laughs> That's funny. So there is a Mini 3 Pro drone handheld gimbal stabilizer bracket. I've actually seen some videos of people using that for this kind of thing. It's pretty interesting. I think the biggest uh, downside for using a drone for real estate videos is they're not uh, quite wide enough. So I don't think it's gonna end up looking great. And also typically the low light performance is not um, amazing on drones. Uh, mine is pretty good, but if you start pushing the ISO, it really starts to get noisy really fast. So I don't know if I really want to spend the money on that clip thing to try this, but who knows? Maybe I'll do it. I have used a drone for a few interior shots, and if I can find them, I'll put them on the screen, but I probably can't. Uh, I think what I did was kind of like flew out a door to show the transition into like this cool landscape area one time and then I also did one where it was just this like really huge house and I flew it showing the transition like from the top of a stair set over into a living room showing this really cool chandelier. Uh, so sparingly and safely, it's fun to use a drone inside sometimes, but we'll see. Uh, let me know in the comments if you also have any crazy ideas for things I should try and make into some future YouTube videos. Uh, curious what you guys are all into. Uh, and that's it. So let me know if you guys have any more questions for future questions and answering video, if you like seeing this type of stuff. And if you're new, thanks so much for joining. Uh, make sure to subscribe and not miss out on future videos coming up this month. And if you're old, you've been around for a while, Thanks for your continued support. If your question was in the video, let me know down in the comments. Uh, if you got more questions, let me know in the comments. And 
As always, look forward to seeing you on the next one. Peace.